I'm in the mountain valley right along the stream bed here. And as you can probably hear, there are birds everywhere. All up in all of these trees. I don't know if they're cottonwoods or elms. But I just found this. This is a feather from a red-tailed hawk. So that's a good sign that there's some big birds in the area, which might not be good for the little birds. But I think the red-tailed hawks out here are probably mostly feeding on stuff like prairie dog. But I'm gonna explore and see what I can find. It didn't take me long to find this awesome looking yellow rumped warbler taking a bath in the cool refreshing waters of the mountain stream. Check out his bright yellow mohawk and matching yellow sections on his wing. And if you look at his backside, you can see where he gets his name. This bird has a yellow rump. This little boy has got to look good for the ladies, and the best way to do that is by making sure all of those feathers are clean and dry. Let's grab a few pictures of this awesome bird so we can see him a little closer. This little bird was deep in cover, so I had to shoot with a wide aperture of f5. I was using auto ISO, and in order to keep the ISO reasonable, I chose a shutter speed of 1 1,000th of a second. The compromise here would be losing any really fast movement, and luckily this little bird wasn't moving too fast. Those tall trees provided a lot of shelter for some beautiful little birds like this yellow warbler. These birds are really quick and hard to pin down for a photo, but this one was nice enough to pause for a nice profile shot. Then I noticed this beautiful lazuli bunting who was busy singing in the morning sun. This was my first time seeing these beautiful birds, and they didn't stick around for very long. They stopped to enjoy the fresh mountain air while they were migrating north. I can't blame them. The air quality in the San Juan mountain range is so fresh and full of beautiful fragrances from wildflowers and fir trees. And I guess all the noise from these songbirds was disrupting this great horned owl's sleep. From that look, I would say it's time to move on. Take a look at that huge hill over there. Right along the bottom, there's this really cool tree line. Let's go see what we can find over there. Come on. <laughs> all the birds are everywhere. My short hike across the mountain meadow was quickly rewarded with this beautiful red-tailed hawk. I knew there was a few in the area from the feather I had found earlier, and it didn't take this big raptor very long to take notice of me and give me this look that seems to say, hey, what are you going to do with that lens? I don't want my picture taken. This was confirmed when the hawk yelled at me and took to the air, where it was met by a very brave western kingbird. This little bird's bravery caught my attention. Let's see if we can get a better look. Here's that beautiful western kingbird now with a look that definitely says, that's right, I showed that red-tailed hawk who's boss, and now let me show you my good side. I really like the colors on this bird and that little curve on the tip of its beak. This bird might be small, but it means business. The western kingbird wasn't the only colorful bird on the other side of the meadow. I also found this super colorful western tanager. Look at the magnificent colors on this bird. What a beauty. It looks like it's been painted. And speaking of color, check out this beautiful mountain bluebird perched ever so delicately on top of this tiny branch. Talk about beautiful. What an incredible shade of blue. You can easily see how those feathers reflect back some awesome blue light. There are two types of bluebirds in this area. You have this awesome mountain bluebird, and then this beautiful western bluebird with that nice orange banding on the chest. And this one was busy searching for food for its babies who were tucked away in a bird box. And check out the quality of the bokeh that comes from the Nikon 500 F4. Or is it bokeh? Or is it bokeh? Oh, I, I'm not sure. Anyways, that refers to the soft blurred background that you see. It just blends all of those colors together in such a super smooth gradient that is so pleasing to look at. And here's another close-up of the same bird. Look at the crazy feather detail on this western bluebird. Wow, it's such a beauty. I grabbed a couple more shots of some bright and colorful birds before moving on. This is the Bullock's Oriole, and one more close-up shot of this incredible yellow warbler with some really strong backlighting. I overexposed this shot in order to get enough light on the bird. And I really like how the color of its body is reflected on the tip of its beak. Just incredible. All right, let's see what else we can find. There's a game trail right here going through this thick underbrush. So let's go see if we can find some deer or elk or something. I've already seen a lot of poop along this trail. Check out these flowers though. Man, they're pretty cool. And suddenly, there they were. Two young, scruffy-looking deer peering at me from deep within the aspen forest. 
you can see these deer are losing their winter coats, and they weren't too sure what to think of me. I waited a few minutes so that they would get used to me, and then I quietly inched forward using trees as cover. Every time I would peek around a tree, I was greeted with a curious deer gaze, and those ears sticking straight up meant these deer weren't too sure what to think of me. If the ears and tails go up, then you're too close. This young deer, who was most likely born the previous year, let me get a nice close-up, but then I heard a huff and the sound of feet stomping on the ground, and I looked to the left, and I saw this older doe who was telling me that I was close enough. That stern look was enough for me. Time to move on. One of the really cool things about Colorado, aside from the incredible landscapes you see everywhere, is there are hundreds of backcountry dirt roads that just really take you out in the middle of what seems like nowhere. But it's really cool because there's very few people out here on these roads. You can drive up through the mountains, in the mountains, through the woods, through these meadows, and there's all kinds of really cool wildlife. In fact, directly over here, which you can't see, there's this huge meadow and there's a couple of elk way off in the distance. So I'm gonna go drive around and see what I can find. Those mountains are the perfect backdrop for some awesome landscape shots. And I really love cruising down these old country roads. I really liked this view, so I pulled over and grabbed this shot using my D850. Here are the settings I used. Shooting with an aperture of f11 helps create a nice wide depth of field, which helps keep the entire landscape in focus. I really like the layers that move from the foreground to the background, and there's that nice balance with the tree on the right, the mountains in the middle, and then the tree on the left. And here's one more shot with that dirt country road off to the left. See how it leads off into the mountains? That's exactly where I want to be before the sun sets. Late afternoon is when a lot of wildlife comes out. So let's go. And this little cutie was just hanging out on a huge boulder, waiting to get its picture taken. This is a golden mantled ground squirrel, and apparently a very well fed one at that. Look at the size of this thing, and apparently it's a little bashful as well. It's okay little buddy, you eat as much food as you want. From cute to kind of scary, and I think kind of scary is being a little bit nice here. This animal just looks frightening to me. This is a yellow-bellied marmot, and they can be as large as 11 pounds or five kilos. I definitely don't want this animal jumping on my face. And believe it or not, marmots are actually squirrels. They spend about half of their lives hibernating. When I found this one, I was at about 7,500 feet in elevation or 2,286 meters. And even more frightening is this shot of a red-tailed hawk with the remains of a prairie dog. I knew I hadn't seen the last of that hawk, and as usual, it didn't stick around. Let's see if we can find some of the prairie dogs. And here they are, looking ever so cautiously at their surroundings. They have to keep a watchful eye out for those hawks and everything else that might want to eat them, and because of that, these animals reproduce quite quickly. Here's a female who obviously has a very large family, and she's busy scanning the area as well. And here's a young prairie dog. These animals live in large colonies of multiple families with huge interconnected mazes of tunnels and you can see them all over the open fields and grasslands in the west. I found this lone female elk grazing in the field at the foot of the mountains. It isn't unusual to see a single female, but I knew there had to be more in the area and then I spotted them on the other side of the road. They would have to jump a fence in order to get to this nice grazing area perfect opportunity for some images. All it takes is one elk to jump the fence and then the rest follow. And this series of images answers the age-old question of why did the elk cross the road? To get to the greener pasture on the other side, of course. The sun was starting to set and you can see that golden colored light from the setting sun in some of these images. I noticed a few young deer in the pasture where the elk had just come from and a nice sunset behind them should make for some pretty dramatic lighting conditions. I grabbed this shot as one of the deer was emerging from the underbrush. There's that awesome lighting I was talking about with that amazing gold color. I then noticed one young deer resting in the grass on the hill. I really liked the rim lighting on the deer's fur, and then two more young deer came down the hill and made for this awesome photo. The light was fading quickly and I thought my day was done, but I continued driving up the mountain until I saw this strange looking bird walking on a dusty dirt covered ridge. This is a dusky grouse, and ironically I had this encounter at dusk. The sun had already gone down, but I wanted to try and grab some images of this awesome looking bird. I was still in my truck, so I used the door as a quick makeshift tripod, and I turned off the engine to reduce vibration. I would have to shoot with a slow shutter speed and a wide aperture in order to get enough light, 
I'm amazed at the low light capabilities of the D850 and the Nikon 500 F4. Here are the exact settings I used. And here's a shot of the entire bird. Look at the light on that bird's chest. What an awesome experience in the San Juan Mountains in Western Colorado. So what was your favorite part of the video? The big bird of prey, the little colorful birds, the little teeny cute animals, the big game, or the landscapes? Let me know in the comment section below. I've had a lot of people actually ask me how they could get these videos in book form. So I've done something a little bit different with this video. I've taken this video and turned it into a downloadable ebook with high res pictures and all the verbiage and the whole story that you just watched. You can get that on my Patreon page as well as a bunch of other cool stuff. There's like Patreon only images, uh, signed copies of my books, t-shirts, all that good stuff. There's a link to my Patreon page in the description below. Go check it out. It's a way that you can help support me and what I do and you get some cool stuff in return. And I'd like to thank everybody for all the support watching my videos, all the messages, all the social media stuff. People tell me where the cool stuff is and how to go get it. I really appreciate that. And as always, click that thumbs up, leave comments, let me know what you thought of the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead because I got a lot more cool stuff planned. And until the next time, I'll see you later.